Okay, so we have already covered a little bit of this during the SPM holiday class. Uh, let's just revisit this a little bit because I know that all of you have forgotten. You all forgot already, right, what we learned. So let, let's recall a little bit before we jump to today's lesson, okay? So what we did cover um, in the SPM holiday class was this. We know that if we have uh, permanent magnets, like north and south separated, um, it will generate a magnetic field between. I'm taking this from your textbook. Uh, I think open to page 138. Lah, huh? Page 138. The blue color arrows here are the magnetic field lines that exist between the permanent magnets north and south. This yellow color circle is the cross-section area of the wire. That means if you're looking at a wire, looking at it from one point of view, right? Um, the This is the cross-section, like the wire, you look at it one the side, you get the circle, right? So that's the cross-section area of the wire. Now, this chapter is on electromagnetism, electromagnetism. So in this whole chapter, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, uh, 4.3, right? 4.4, no, 4.3, 4.3, uh it's you're going to learn about how electricity generates magnetism and opposite also how magnetic fields generate electricity so we're going to focus on the first part which is how electricity um works well, electricity generates magnetism as well as what happens when these two combine that's why when you look at the topic 4.1 name wait panjang near force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field wow why so long one the name okay because it is about how a force is generated when you have a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So what we have here, we already know, you've already learned this before. When you have a current carrying conductor, that means a wire with current flowing through it, it generates a magnetic field around the wire. That's the green color circles that we saw. That's the one where we, you know, like we try to recall how to use the right hand grip rule. Okay. I won't spend so much time on this because we've already learned this before. Uh, but to remind you what's happening here, the blue color arrows and the green color arrows and all that are the original force lines, the original magnetic force lines. But you must remember force lines cannot intersect like this, although such thing as intersection but they need to show you the original so that you can understand how this is formed. So the blue lines and the green lines, the force lines will interact, not intersect, uh, interact to form the purple color lines. And this purple color line is known as, uh, will form a, a field called catapult field. Okay, it's not showing up because the text is white color. Catapult field. So it's already in your, your uh your textbook there page one three eight catapult field so remember it's called a catapult field because like a rubber band that acts as a catapult okay when you put an object here like you know some of you very naughty when you're younger take a paper and then you change or you take a plastic elastic plus right yeah when you apply an object or a force one way when you let go it propels the object out of the way so like a catapult so that's exactly um how the field works as well so the purple color lines is the result of the interaction between the green and blue lines. Like how it works is because you can see, eh, underneath here, uh, eh, see all oh, wow, same, same direction like that. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, so more at the bottom. On top here, eh, clashing, clashing, all cancelling each other out. So that's why on top got less. So this imbal imbalance, okay, the unbalanced forces here, here stronger, here weaker, the stronger field lines will put will create a force that moves towards the weaker field lines. That's how it creates a catapult effect. From here, then we also recall how to use the Fleming's left hand rule because you guys told me you learned before in uh, lower secondary, right? So Fleming's left hand rule is used to predict. That means Fleming, right, he, they, after they discovered all this, you can draw out, lah, huh? so we found, hey, the reason why there's a catapult force is because of the unbalanced forces that exist due to the interaction between the magnetic fields. That means magnetic field from the blue color one, interact with the green color one, chung, 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 wah, come out with this result. Hey, not balanced, 
creates a force. But every time you want to keep drawing again and again, it's very mafa, very susah, very susah to keep drawing again and again. So instead, right, they thought, okay, what if I want to predict more easily in the future? That's where Fleming came up with the left hand rule. Um, Fleming's left hand rule is used as a predictor. You use this to predict the di direction of forces. Okay, it's not a law. Fleming's left hand rule is not a law. It's not used to say, oh, the law states this, 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 this. It's not a law. Okay, Fleming's left hand rule is used to predict the direction of induced force. That means you imagine, right? Um, like it's like in S actual SPM, lah. Okay, um, in SPM, they will give you the. Let me move this a bit. Uh, they'll give you, let's say, like uh, the magnets, and they'll give you the Y. They won't give you the force. They won't give you the this one. It means I imagine they won't give you this. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I wanted to cancel it out. They won't. They won't give you this. So they'll give you the magnet. They'll give you the wire. You need to predict. Okay, is the force going to go up, go down, go left, go right, go somewhere else? You need to predict. So in so takan, you want to keep drawing. Very susah to draw. So instead you use Fleming's left-hand rule. So Fleming came up with this because they found every time they want to predict, to try to predict is troublesome just by observing. So that's why he came up, oh, if I get each finger to represent something, then they found, hey, correct, or every time I use it over and over again. So that's how they came up with this um, with this hand thing. And that's why they came up with it as a rule, which is just used as a predictor. Does that make sense? So how to use this? You can uh, use my method, which is feed my cat, where F force feed, M magnetic field, C current. So it's like, oh, uh, feed my cat, F, F is what, oh, F is force, uh, M, M, my, right, uh, magnet, uh, cat, cat is what, uh, current, uh, okay? You can use that. Uh, you won't find this in the books, because I came up with it. Because uh, different books have different methods. Some books suggest uh, that you use FBI. What Chewa FBI? Why but me? What what's gonna do with why got FBI? Okay, how to use this? Uh, F is again um, this F is force. B is actually for bar, magnetic bar. I because I is current ma right like V equals I R. We learned uh, in the, the electricity chapter right. Uh, like V is potential difference, I is current. So that's why FBI. So up to you. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you remember them correctly. You want to come up with your own one, also can't. Uh, can, can't, can't. Like English is that. Also can. Okay, they're not going to test you on what's the FMC, FBI, they won't check. They just want to know, can you predict or not? Okay, so remember that when you want to use this, you need to line up your fingers in that direction that means uh okay the magnetic field must point from north to south so north to south okay north to south this way okay and then current uh current direction is this way right uh then your finger must point that direction as a result you see your thumb pointing up that's why the force is pointing up okay so uh we will do questions to to figure this out um but i'll let's do that after we finish topic 4.1 because uh there's no questions usually on this alone there's usually a combination compilation of different questions. But I, I, did, I think we've done some also, right, during the school holiday uh, lesson. So uh, you can watch back the video for that, but I'm going to move on now. Any questions up to this point? Okay, so this is what we've already covered. So let's go on into uh, the next part. I'm going to slide number three now. Slide number three. Factors which affect the strength of the induced force. If you want to look, eh, where is it in your textbook? Huh? Where is it? Ah, there, right there. Page 139 in the bottom, okay? Ah, page 139 in the bottom there. Factors affecting the magnitude of the force acting on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Then you read, up ah, knee, read, read, read. Ah, activity 4.3. Ah, yeah, but then we are not in school, la, teacher, how to do activity. Then the minor put on hold first, la. okay? Uh, what I want you guys to figure out now, you can read the book or you can use your noggin in your brain and you figure out. Tell me the factors which affect the strength of the induced force. So what I mean by the factors which affect the strength of the induced force is, uh, if you recall the video that we watched, let's see. Uh, I should, let, me, let me play back that video and see. Come, come. 
Jing, jing, jing. Okay, come, this one. Okay, we won't watch the whole thing. Okay, no need to hear music, so no need. Ah, uh, no need. Okay, we just watch. I uh, just want you to look at this part. Ah! Oh, oh, okay, he's putting it again. Ah, watch it, wow, like magic. Woo, woo. Okay, look, I already shared this video in your GC. You want to watch? Ah, uh, go and watch the whole thing on GC again, okay? I just want, just want to talk about that few seconds that we already know that uh, the force will be induced. So when we talk, the force when we talk about strength of the force it's because you must remember force is a vector quantity that means not only got direction got magnitude as well so that means uh you can actually make the force bigger or smaller and based on this experiment eh, shh, go away okay you think logically yeah okay uh, it's difficult to measure the force in this kind of experiment, but you can have something represent the value of the force. So you think hey, if the force is bigger, means the copper wire will slide even further. True, ma? Like you take your rubber band, right? Ah, then you have small little force. Ah, it won't fly you very far, right? Hey, alamak, it's not even flying. Okay. But if you pull with greater force and you let go, then the rubber band will fly further. Same concept, ma. So in this case, right, uh, if you want to do the experiment uh, and you want to measure the magnitude of the force, you can't measure directly. What you do is you measure the distance the wire has traveled. I don't think, I think that will be on page 141. Yeah, your book doesn't have that experiment. Never mind, but that's the idea. So now I don't want to talk about experiment. I just want to talk about factors. And you guys as physics students, you need to know how to figure this out. If I'm asking you for the factors which affect the strength, that means like, okay, what if we want to make the force bigger? What if we want to make the force smaller? What, what do we need to manipulate? Because you must remember, based on this FBI or FMC, your force is, in, is the one that's, that's, that's uh, generated, right? So this will be your responding variable. So when you think about factors, you must think about, okay, which are the possible manipulated variables? So that's what I'm asking for in this slide. Okay, so that is for the uh, strength. By the way, do you know what the term induced means? Forgot to mention, check with you. You know what the term induced means? You can think of it as being similar to the word produced. Okay, To induce actually means to produce or to generate or to create. So uh, I just want you to be familiar with the term because you may come across this term, especially when you're doing questions. And you're like, ah, what is this? I don't know what's this induced thing. Okay, so induced means to as if to produce or to create or to generate. So it is the produced force, the generated force, the created force, because we don't apply a force. We just switch on the, the circuit and then the force woo, by, by magically do by itself. So it was created or it was produced. Okay. Make sense? So it's, that's why it's not applied. Huh? Applied force is we apply the force. This one was no, we didn't do anything. The force created by itself. Okay? So, rakan rakan sekalian, please give me the factors which affect the strength of the induced force that you can identify from what we have learned so far. Current strength, amount of current. Okay. Um, don't say strength of current, yeah. Um, I think I better not change to put the word strength or so. I think I'm going to confuse you. Sorry. I realized I made the mistake here, which I told you guys not to make. Let's not use the word strength. Let's use the word magnitude. Sorry. Let's not use the word strength because strength is actually, um, I, I made the same mistake. My bad. My apologies. Uh, strength is a very specific um, physical quantity. Uh, so let's not use the word strength. Don't, let's not say strength of current, strength of force anymore. Let's use the term magnitude. Amount also can. Because strength is referred to whether the object can break or not. So yeah, let, let's not use the word strength or strong from now on. So okay, amount of current. Any, any other factor you can think of? 
Oh, you like making your book now? Like, oh, where's come on, give me the. Okay. Anyone else? Magnetic field. Okay, magnetic field related for sure. But um, can you give me a physical quantity? Like what the a measurable part of the magnetic field? No temperature? No, not in this case. I, I need to explain a little bit about that also. I think this one you can say strength. Yeah, this one, this one you can say strength. I just said don't say strength. But I'm thinking now, yeah, we're talking about magnetic field. There's no such thing as magnetic, magnetic or magnetic field. So I think this one you have to mention strength. Because magnetic field, this one about strength. It's not about breakability, but it's about how how strong the field lines are. Type of conductor, size of magnetic field, no. Um, type of conductor, not really. Uh, but let me talk about that. Size also, let me talk about that. Okay. Up to here first. Now, if, I know some of you are like, ah, but I don't know how to tell. Okay. Here's what you need to learn. Uh, as, as science students, when you come across something new, and we but we but we're learning a theory like this lah, huh? and we're learning something that's already known, and then suddenly you're like, oh, I gotta try to figure this out for myself, like how huh? how to figure out the factors. One of the easiest ways is to is to look at what influences that thing, especially when it's being produced. What I mean by this, so see here I mentioned R V M V just now, right? So what we've learned, let me backtrack to slide number two. So if you're on the jam board, come with me back to slide number two. So we already know the force that's being induced here is due to, number one, the magnetic fields from the permanent magnet. Number two, the magnetic fields around the wire. So even if you look at your FBI, FMC, you've got force magnet current. Why got this nonsense here? Because this is showing us that if you want to predict the force, you need to have these two, magnetic field and current. What does this tell us? If force is your RV, the other two are your MV. Again, uh, if force is your RV, the other two are your MV. So one way that you can determine the factors in the future, if you have something like this, is you look, what is producing that thing those things that are producing it guaranteed will be the factors because if they're not the factors why are we even con why are they even mentioning this in the first place does that make sense so that means now if you want to memorize the factors i'm going to memorize already why because you already know hey feed my cat ah got a force magnet current ah force the induced ah, that means the other two is the uh, factors law so as science students, right, so in the future, once you start to see this pattern, when you anything you learn new in the future, you, if you can spot this pattern, right, it's easier for you to identify the factors in the future. Okay? Can follow so far? Rakan-rakan sekalian. No, rakan lah. Murid-murid sekalian. Pelajar-pelajar sekalian. So you see, right, when you can see this pattern, then it makes it easier for you not do it to memorize anymore. So uh, coming back to slide number three. Now, because we're talking about the magnitude, that's why I, I'm writing words that are related to the magnitude also. Lah. The amount of current, I, I wanted to highlight because it looks nicer. Amount of current. Actually, I wanted to write amount, but then it's like, how come you, you can't write amount of magnetic field? So okay, lah, in this case, strength. So some of you gave me things like type of conductor, temperature, and all that. Um, just to let you guys know, lah, ha? It is possible for them to affect the magnitude, but those are considered secondary factors. Secondary factors. Uh, some are even tertiary, tertiary factors. Uh, what I mean by secondary and tertiary factors, it means this. Now, uh, if you talk about type of conductor, type of conductor may, may, may affect the resistance. 
So the resistance may affect the value of the current. So then in end up, hey, you use something with higher resistance like nichrome compared to something with lower resistance like copper. Yeah, then obviously the one with copper got more current so that the magnitude of the force produced is higher compared to using nichrome law. Um, that is if you want to talk about type of conductor. But those are, that's, that's like a secondary tertiary factor because that, con that type affects the resistance which then affects the current. But if you could somehow make the nichrome and copper wire have the exact same current flowing through, the force created will also be the same. That means, oh, once I make current the same, the type of conductor is no longer a factor. So, you know, so some, so like in that case, then, eh, that's not a factor. But if you just want to look at the surface value, then yes, it could be a factor, but it is a factor that influences other things. So normally for SPM, we don't want to look at secondary factors, tertiary factors. We look at primary factors. That means assuming everything else is the same, this particular factor, we, we, we modify only that. You understand? So, that, so that's why, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why um, even though you, if you think about it, hey, but I got a link here and I can show you, right? SPM, we don't want that linking, linking, linking. Just get straight to the primary factor. What is that factor that directs, directly affects this, um, this, this RV? Okay. And then why size? Why, why size is not a factor, uh, not a factor? Because size of magnetic field, uh, the size, the word is a bit ambiguous. So size, although can mean amount, but size can also mean the area of the size. So a bit um, confusing. So you see why we cannot say the area because inside the same area, you can have a situation where you can have a situation where within the same area, you can have a lot. Hey, hello, what am I doing? <laughs> it's supposed to change. You can have a lot of lights. That means the field strength is very, very strong. Or you can have very weak lines. But the size or the area is the same so that's why um that's why the that's why size is not really a factor in this case lah also okay does that make sense murid murid sekalian okay any any other questions no okay so okay so now still so you notice uh, i wrote magnitude here i wrote specifically amount of current and strength of magnetic field okay now, if let's say we go to slide number four now, I want you to tell, tell me the factors which affect the direction of the induced force. The direction. So what do you think this time? Based on what we have just discussed, what factors uh, could affect the direction of the induced force this time? Direction of current, good. What else? North and south direction, correct. Very good. So you guys are getting the hang of this, right? Uh, direction of magnetic field, lah. Um, that's that's the way to say. But you can also, if you write north and south, yeah, that's fine. North and south, pula apa ni? North and south direction. Do you think there are any other factors? Let me put different color a bit so that not so boring. Okay. Okay, I can't change the font, so that's why. So this time, because we're talking about direction, that's why you must mention direction, right? Because change direction, change is that more, right? Yeah. Okay, so getting the hang of this really, right? Uh, I think this part, we will do this uh, in our next lesson, lah, but we'll stop up to up to this point first because uh, next part is, is quite a long explanation. Yeah, up to here first. Any questions?